The broadcast of the Local Board of Appeal and Equalization will now begin. Good afternoon. Welcome to this live broadcast of our virtual meeting. Uh, this meeting includes the remote participation of members as authorized under Minnesota statutes sections 13D.021 due to the declared local health pandemic. For the record, my name is Neil Anderson and I am chair of the Local Board of Appeal and Equalization. I will now call this meeting to order. The open meeting law requires a roll call vote to be conducted during a virtual meeting and a certification form will be completed for each local board meeting. This initial roll call will allow the city assessor to complete the certification form on behalf of the board members with a verbal signature. Will the clerk call the roll so that we may verify the presence of a quorum? Board member Bland. Present. Board member Havig. Is absent. Board member Reed. Present. Board member Tinker. Present. Terry Anderson. Present. There are four members present. Um, well, uh, let the record show uh, uh, a quorum of the board is present. We'll proceed to the agenda, a copy of which was posted for public access to the city's legislative information management system, which is available at lims.minneapolismn.gov. Members, of, uh, the agenda is before you for your consideration. May I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Uh, it's been, uh, do I have a second? Tinker, second. It has been um, moved by Bland and seconded by Tinker to adopt the agenda. With that, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland. Aye. Board member Havig is absent. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. There are four ayes and the motion passes. Motion passes and the agenda as printed is adopted. We have nine appeals scheduled uh, for from 4 to 5 p.m. We will proceed in case order as listed on the agenda. Uh, applicants, when your case is called, the applicant will be given five minutes to present the appeal. The board will consider and take action after these cases, if time allows, uh, or at the end of the day after hearing all, all of the cases. If your phone is muted, press star six to unmute. Property owners will be notified of our decision by mail after the board has adjourned. We'll start with item number three, 4629 Lake Harriet Parkway East. The applicant is John Tillotson. Please state uh, your name and property address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Sure. <clears throat> this is John Tillotson. I just want to make sure you can hear me. Yes, we can. Thank you, sir. OK. Um, the property address is 4629 East uh, Lake Harriet Parkway, Minneapolis. Um, my sister and I own this home, uh, <clears throat> although neither one of us resides in Minnesota now. Uh, it's a home we grew up in. I'm a Washburn High School grad as well as the University of Minnesota but uh, I managed to fall in love with a New Yorker and that's that's where I am now. Although we hope to move back to Minneapolis once our girls are launched. Uh, the home 4629 we believe is the first home built on the lake. It's, it's like an old fashioned lake home like the lake homes used to look on Lake Minnetonka. It's relatively small. It's a, a 2200 square foot home with with uh, four bedrooms, a full bath upstairs, a half bath downstairs. Um, it had a, a remodel when my parents bought it uh, in the 60s. Uh, and since then, it hasn't had any additional work done to it. Um, <clears throat> the, you know, I took note of this stepped up estimated market value from 765 to over a million dollars. and and put it in the context of the house next door that sold last year, which, which, which I included in a, um, in a, as an attachment. And I don't know if you members have that in front of you, but it is a home that, um, that is on a, on a lot that is almost exactly the same size. It is, uh, uh, it is over three times the square footage it has. 
has four bedrooms and five baths, and it sold last year for a million three. Uh, and it just struck me when I looked at this valuation, given the fact that most, if, if anyone bought our home, it would likely be a teardown uh, and somebody would do new construction. Uh, it struck me that, that a house next door is selling for a million three and our old home being valued at, at over a million dollars <throat> was, um, was excessive. Um, so that's I, I'm I'm open to any questions that any of you have, uh, but but that's the only comp that that I produced was our next door neighbor. Okay, thank you very much. Um, opening the floor to the board members for any questions or comments of Mr. Tillotson. Uh, board member Bland. Uh, Mr. Tillotson, and I'm looking at the. Um, Evaluation we have here, uh, they show that the um, property is valued at one million three thousand dollars. Is that your understanding? That's what I see as well. OK, so what I don't understand, and I don't know if you can clear this up for me, the land is worth nine eighty. The structure is worth twenty three thousand. And previous years, the structure was only worth five thousand. Are we talking about the carriage house? You know, I don't, I don't see that on here. So I didn't, I don't know that um, there is an, there's an old cottage in the back of the property that used to be rented out separately. It used to be the office of the man who built the house, but that's been unoccupied since, since we moved in. So I don't think, I, I, I don't know where that number comes from for the value of the house. Okay, assessors, can you uh, shed some light on this for me, please? Chair Anderson and board member Bland, we're looking into it right now for you. It'll take us a couple minutes. Thank you. In the meantime, are there any other questions for Mr. Tillotson? I mean, if the if the if the value of the land is is uh, nine hundred and eighty thousand, well, that would that would suggest that the house next door, or the building itself, is only worth three hundred thousand at eight thousand square feet. Is that right? Well, that, that's the math that, that I have as well. Um, so uh, how, how long has the property not been occupied? Uh, we have uh, renters in there now. Oh, I They've been in there since my parents died. Um, and how long has it been a rental property? Since 2000. Uh, would you be able to share what they're paying in rent right now? Sure, $1,750 a month. Thank you. Um, any other comments or questions for uh, Mr. Tillotson while we're waiting for the city? Chair Anderson, can you restate exactly what information you're looking for? Well, uh, we want to confirm that the uh, main structure of the property is what's valued at uh, 23,000. That is correct. The valuation for 2020, um, the land is valued at 980,000. The building structure is valued at $23,000. We did do a revaluation of land in um, 2020, so that is the correct allocation. OK, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, with no other questions for you, uh, thank you for your time, Mr. Tillotson, and uh, you'll be notified in writing after adjournment of the board. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Uh, item number four, 3701 Lake Street West, case number 20BH-0118. The applicant is Amy Gagne, a representative of Sella Investments Limited, LL. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your ap appeal to the board. Ms. Gagne, please press star six on your phone to unmute so that you may present your appeal to the board. Hello, 
is Amy Gagne. My address at my office is 4915 West 35th Street, Suite 102, St. Louis Park, Minnesota, 55416. The unit that we're speaking about right now, and I'm with Mr. Paz Sella, who's the um, owner of Sell Investments, 3701 West Lake Street, and I'm going to let Mr. Sella speak with you. Thank you. Hello, guys. So the Thank valuation you. in... Go ahead, sir. No, I, I just thank you. Go ahead. Uh, 3701 West Lake Street, uh, built in the 60s, 18 unit building, all one bedroom units, roughly about 725, 750 square foot. Uh, you guys assessed the building at a million eight fifty in 2019 and in 20. The valuation jumped to two million one twenty seven, which is almost, uh, if I'm not mistaken, close to three hundred thousand dollars increase, which is about eighteen nineteen percent increase. We do believe that the price went up from nineteen to twenty, but we don't believe that it went up by three hundred thousand, close to three hundred thousand dollars by eighteen percent. I think that more five to six percent reflect the true value of this building at 2020. Um, thank you. Um, do, do you have anything uh, else to add to that, or shall I ask for questions from the board? We we don't have. They're just very basic models units there's not um they have not been renovated they're very simple the design is still that of the 1960s and you can ask the questions to the it's board. not the vintage the vintage buildings that you see a lot in uptown on the older buildings not the brown uh, stone. They, uh, most of our portfolio uh, we own a lot of 60s type building which is more cookie cutter built type of buildings nothing wrong with them but we just feel that the valuation here went uh, a little away here between 19 to 20. Right, okay. and we and we rent a lot of low to moderate income families. That's a pretty much the primary basis, and veterans are a predominantly the group of folks that we work with. Thank you. Are, are there any questions from the the board uh, for Ms. Gagne or, or Mr. Sella? Okay, uh, seeing none, uh, thank, thank you for your time today. Uh, you'll be notified in writing of our decision. Okay, sir, may yes. I interject? We do have two other properties that are after your next one, if you're going in order. So I don't know if you want to take our two others right now or if you want us just to stay on the phone and uh, wait. I, I need direction from uh, either Jackie or Rebecca. Um, Chair Anderson, um, it is at the pleasure of the board, but the instructions to property owners um, went out that it was in case order, and I did provide the list to them when I sent it. Okay. That's a, that's, we'll just step aside. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, yep. uh, item number five uh, is 5039 Fremont Avenue South, case number 20BH-0119. The applicant, uh, James Clancy, I would like you to state your name and address for the record, and then you'll have five minutes to present your appeal to the board. Yeah, press star six if you've been muted. Fremont Avenue South. Uh, Hello? Yes, can, can you restate that? You were muted for the first part of that. I'm sorry, my name is James Clancy. I'm the owner of the property uh, under appeal, at, which is at 5039 Fremont Avenue South, Minneapolis. Thank you. Go ahead with your appeal, sir. Okay, what we're appealing about basically is this, is that the we feel that the assessed valuation of 668500 which was the same value that was on last year's uh, statement, is excessive, is, is high in that uh, looking at the houses on our block and surrounding us are, are very similar in size of so roughly 21 to 2200 square feet according to the property evaluation and therefore there are four bedrooms they're all uh, one bath one full bath one half bath etc cetera, etc cetera, on it uh, 
in 19 in 2017 our assessed valuation was 5000 or 576500 and the increase to 668 it is a uh, was a 16% increase on it uh, we do not have a first floor bathroom we have a one car detached garage on it and a partially finished uh, basement which contains my my man cave on it uh, in a letter that I sent, I said that the, the valuation should be in the neighborhood of 640000 give or take. I think that's a little high for it. Uh, I just tried to relate the property north of us at 5130 Fremont, sold in 2019. It's the same size, one, four bedrooms, one and a half baths, uh, with a two-car garage. That sold for $470,000 with an initial asking price of 525000 on it. Uh, its market value for 2021 is going to be 539,000. The house to the to the south of us has an assessed valuation of 702,500, dollars but it has two bedrooms, or excuse me, four bedrooms, two baths, one on the first floor, and it also has a two-car garage. We have a one-car garage. I may repeat on that. Across the street from us at 5039 to Fremont, there's a house that's on the market currently on the market. Uh, again, four bedrooms, one bath. Does not have a bath on the first floor. It has an assessed valuation of 577,500. The initial asking price, uh, when it was put on uh, up for sale in the fall, was 625,000. It has been reduced to 600,000. Uh, it was reduced, excuse me, to 600,000. It's currently on the market at 559,000. Uh, across the street from us, directly across, there's also a, uh, a house that is similar to ours except that it has a first floor bathroom and it has a two car garage. We feel that the bathrooms, not having a bathroom on the first floor and having a one car garage are uh, mitigating factors that would reduce the value of our house on it. Uh, that's about all I've got to say for it right now. If you have any questions, well, let me add one thing. Uh, in, the, we, in the next door neighbor flyer that comes out, we received a, the late the last value shows the estimate by uh, by Keller Williams shows our valuation of an estimated value uh, of five hundred eighty five thousand eight hundred. So those are I think are some of the reasons that we that I think that our the the, uh, the assessed valuation is high at this time. Thank That's you. It. If you have questions, I'd be glad to answer. Thank you. Uh, I'll ask the board if they have any uh, questions for Mr. Clancy. Um, seeing none at this time, uh, thank you for your time, Mr. Clancy, and you'll be notified in writing of our decision after adjournment of the board. OK, thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Item number six. Uh, 700 University Avenue Southeast, case number 20BH-8020. The applicant is uh, Amy Gagne, uh, representative of Sella Investments Limited, LLP. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Go ahead, uh, Amy, Ms. Gagne. Amy Gagne. This is Amy Gagne with Sella Investments and we are talking about 700 University Avenue Southeast and I have Mr. Pazella here to discuss it with us. Thank you. So as I said before earlier this morning, we have uh, about eight properties on University Avenue Southeast. Uh, uh, most of them are rented to low income and student, uh, student housing. Uh, this is one of our smaller unit size building. It's a 30 unit building. Again, it was built in the 60s. The uh, tax value in 2019 was 2,749,000, let's say 2,750, just round the number. And in 2020, it's jumping to uh, 3,299,000, let's say 3,300,000, 3, over 22%. We feel that the 2019 reflects uh, better valuation of this building. We understand about increases, but we don't feel that more than five or six percent increase from 19 to 20 is warranted. Uh, our rent on this building uh, anywhere between $850 to 950. 
Um, I don't think that we've done any major, I know that we didn't do any major renovations or replace kitchens. We do maintain the buildings, they're well maintained. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's it for this one. It's just uh, the jump of almost uh, 500, over half a million dollars, $550,000. It's just, I don't think that it's warranted. This is the one that we haven't. Well, we can, if you yeah. want to add something. We also have an older grain like elevator in that unit that's cost uh, thousands of dollars just to continue it up. And if we were to renovate that, it's an almost a near impossibility, but we spent almost 200,000 to 250 just to maintain the elevator well, that's, that's located in that. Called, uh, yeah. by the fire department. Yep. It has yep. nothing it's to still do. Part of the tax. So that's pretty much for this building. It went from, uh, you know, the increase is 21% roughly. And we feel that uh, maybe something in the neighborhood of 2 million 850, 2 million nine is more reflective of of uh well the 2020 tax should be in our opinion okay uh, thank you uh, are there any questions from any of the board members or comments uh, i just have one question I, I was a little confused is there a green elevator on this building and in, in addition to the apartment oh, building it no. was an old elevator, and a couple of years ago, the uh, fire department wanted to, they required to do some additional work, not just on this elevator, yeah. to, and that was a very large expense because it's a, it's a very small space and a very small elevator, so. Right. It's not a normal elevator that goes floor to floor to floor. It's an elevator that they used to use to carry um, products. So it's a very strange elevator. Oh, okay. Now, now I got a better understanding. Thank you. Uh, with no other questions, uh, we'll move on to your next property, item number seven seven seventeen, University Avenue Southeast, case number two zero BH dash zero one two one. The ap applicant is Amy Gagne uh, and uh, representative of Cell Investments Limited LLP. Please state your name and address for the record, and then go ahead. Amy Gagne, Cell Investments, 49, uh, the unit that we're talking about today is the 717 University Avenue Southeast. Thank you, and I'm here with Mr. Paz Sella. So pretty much the same same point that I raised before, 19, the value was a million eight eight eight. Uh, it's jumping in 20 to 2 million two two six six which is over 20% increase. We we understand that there should be an increase, but we don't believe that this property went up 20% in value. About 24 units, uh, about 650 square foot units, so they're on the smaller size. Um, and it's not like we're saying, hey, we don't believe that we should be increased at all. We just think that it's, excessive. Uh, it's extremely excessive. Um, and uh, we believe that five or six percent increase is warranted, but not 21 percent increase, in our opinion. I okay. agree. Uh, thank you very much. Are, um, are there any questions from uh, any of the board members? Okay, seeing none, uh, thank you for your time today and uh, we'll, you will be notified in writing. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. have a good day. Yep. Um, item number eight, uh, 5153, oh, uh, excuse me, we will skip that item being that there is not a caller uh, currently. Uh, we'll go on to item number 10, 4893, Lake Harriet Parkway East. Uh, the applicant is Douglas Iden. Please state your name and address for the record and then pre present your appeal to the board. Hello, this is Doug Iden. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, state your address for the record and please proceed. At 4893 East Lake Harriet Parkway. Uh, owner there is my wife and occupants. Um, 
in 2018, we had a, um, an increase in the value of 16% from uh, 1.185 million to 1.3745. Uh, appealed that and the appraisal was done uh, last June, I believe, 20, in 2019. And the value was actually reduced from the 1.185 to 1.15 uh, million. But at that time, the appraiser said she couldn't change 2019, that I'd have to appeal that. And um, then I had um, some medical issues arise and different things and did not get 2019 appealed. So 2019 stayed at that uh, 1.3745. And then 2020 has stayed at that number too. Um, that value seems high. Again, that's a 16% increase off of the 2017 value. Um, I included some sales for the period of October of 2018 to September of 2019. I believe that's the right period to appeal for 2020. And you can see that those sales, whether you base it on square footage or, you know, average square footage, bedrooms, bathrooms, that type of thing, um, or size of the lot, we have a smaller lot for uh, that neighborhood. Um, the value is, seems overvalued. And then also one of the comps I listed on there is actually the next door neighbor. They sold their house for um, 1.2 million and it's being torn down. So if you consider that as the land value, that lot is over twice as big as my lot. And uh, I have a easement to use the driveway on that lot. My lot isn't even big enough to have a, a driveway on. So I think that also impairs the value, but if you were to um, take that 1.2 million and, and say my lot's half the size, 600,000 for the land value, my current land value assessments is 832,700. So that seems a couple hundred thousand high. And then the building assessed value too also is um, uh, 90,000 higher than it was. Um, back in 2017, that would be, um, oh, 2018 when it was reduced, 90,000, when an appraiser actually came through the house and we haven't done any renovations since then. And in fact, uh, we have two bathrooms that are over 60 years old that have some quite interesting colors that need to be renovated and the kitchen's 24 years old and that needs to be remodeled. Um, and I did do, I fixed the stairs last year, but I don't know if repairing, that's the outside stairs, the outside stairs. I don't know if that should be factored in or not. That was about um, $7,500, uh, but that was a, a repair to keep the property up. Um, and, you know, we'll be doing some landscaping this year and we plan to do the remodels, but in the meantime, you know, the value seems high compared to other uh, comparables in the neighborhood for, given the size of the house and the size of the lot. Any questions on any of those numbers? Okay, uh, well, uh, you have about a minute uh, if you want to continue or we can open it up to questions from board members right now. No, I uh, don't have anything else. Okay, uh, I'm, um, board members, uh, do you have any questions uh, for Mr. Iden? So uh, the only, uh, or the question that I have, uh, your driveway currently is uh, an easement across the neighbor's property to get to your garage? Yes. And uh, that's uh, to a two car garage? Yes. Okay. And uh, I think that's, uh, I have the rest of your, uh, of your information here. Um, I see no other questions. Uh, thank you for your time today, Mr. Iden, and you'll be notified in writing of our decision after adjournment. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, we'll go on to item number 11, 1007 26th Avenue Northeast, case number 20BH-0125. The applicant is uh, Jade Plank. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. 
Hi. Hello, everybody. My name is Jade Plank. I'm the property owner. Uh, property address is 1007 26th Avenue Northeast. And I am disputing the assessed value at this. Uh, projected assessment is 325000 um, based on fair market value or assessment. I purchased this property September of 2018, uh, or sorry, 2019. Um, so just a couple months ago, uh, purchased it on the open market. It was listed. Uh, there were eight offers on this. I was the highest and I was accepted at $272,000. So based on that, under open market, it's worth 272. I did include the um, Alta settlement, real estate settlement, to show my purchase price at 272 without any concessions um, to the board. Oh, we have that. Thank you. Uh, do you have anything else you would like to add to that? Uh, I have nothing else to add unless you guys have any questions in regard to that property. Okay. Uh, do we have any questions from uh, board members regarding this property? Um, Chair Anderson, this is Rebecca. Yep. Just just so you know, um, Ms. Plank also has a property that we are going to hear about in the next hour. So she's just going to stay on the call with us. Okay, thank you. Uh, I see no other questions uh, for you at this time, uh, Ms. Plank. Uh, with 1007-267 Northeast, you'll be notified after adjournment of the, the meeting of our decision. Please hang on and we'll bring you back for the, the next session. Okay. Um, we're at 4.30. Uh, it is, uh, we'll, the board will consider and act on those appeals that were made between the four and five time period. Uh, the first item is item number three, appeal for 4629 Lake Harriet Parkway East, case number 20BH-0117. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Board member Bland. Board member Bland. Yeah, um, I, I don't know how I can even evaluate this with a structure that's valued at $22,000. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I think, you know, an appraiser needs to get out there and see, is there a typo somewhere? This just doesn't make any sense. Uh, it does not appear to, but uh, uh, board member Tinker. I think in that case, when you see um a discrepancy like that. I think the assessor is kind of implying that it's a teardown and they value it the whole thing and then just subtract the land value and that's how you end up with the building value. Um, I'm not sure it's terribly insightful, but maybe someone on the assessor's team can uh, comment on that. Chair Anderson and board members, um, it is correct. Um, we are focused on the um, total market value, um, not the breakdown between the land value and the building value. As you know, we value properties and um, utilizing mass appraisal techniques. And um, we did adjust land values this year in some areas. They were rather significant because the land hadn't been um, seen any adjustments in several years. So we, Mr. Tinker is correct in that we set a total value and in this case it was a reallocation then between the land value and the building value. So the board really needs to address the total market value of the property and then you know if then if we need to look at the reallocation for the 2021 market value we can do that. Okay thanks for the clarification. Uh, board member Bland. Board member Bland. Sorry. Um, then in that case, looking at the land value and knowing that uh, homes on the east side of Lake Harriet can easily sell for $3 million or better, that um, that does make some sense. And Mr. Tinker, thank you for uh, helping me understand that discrepancy. 
Um, the, the comparable that the, the applicant sent in uh, is on a, a lot that is quite a bit larger than that property and uh, the house uh, is quite a bit uh, larger as well. And that sold uh, uh, April 19 for 1 million three. If there are no other comments, uh, I, may I have a motion? Um, Board Member Bland, did you uh, request the floor? No. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yours was last post. Um, Board Member Tinker. I guess without a very detailed analysis of not only both improved properties as well as vacant land in the area that should be presented by the property owner, I move to sustain the value at 4629 Lake Harriet Parkway East at $1,003,000. Uh, do I have a second on that? Second. That has been moved by Tinker, seconded by Bland to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $1,003,000. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havig is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Nay. With three ayes and one nay, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the appeal for 37, or item number four, the appeal for 3701 Lake Street West, case number 20BH-0118. Are there any questions or discussion from board members related to this property? Board Member Tinker. Um, same with what we've discussed with all these other um, apartment ones. Um, without a detailed analysis of both uh, comparable properties and an income workup, I move we sustain the value of 3701 Lake Street West at $2,234,000. Thank you. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Reed. Uh, it has been moved by Tinker and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $2,234,000. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havoc is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Uh, item number five, appeal for 5039 Fremont Avenue South, case number 20BH-0119. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, board member Tinker, did you request the floor? I did not. Okay. Sorry. Um, any other questions or comments from board members? Board member Bland. Uh, from the information that he um, submitted, it seems that it may be on the high side. Uh, what would have helped, I think, is. Um, a little more detailed information about the homes that he claims are are uh, superior to his, but have a lower valuation. Um, so I'm I'm not sure where to go with this one. Um, I agree that there seems to be uh, a case to be made, but 
Um, in my opinion, he failed to make it with the information supplied. Um, any other comments or questions? Uh, may, may I have a motion, please? Bland, I move to sustain the value of 50, 9, 50, 5039 Fremont Avenue South at $668,500. Thank you. Do I have a second? Tinker, second. It's been moved by Bland and seconded by Tinker to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $668,500. Uh, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havig is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, item number six is the appeal for 700 University Avenue Southeast, case number 20BH-0120. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, board member Tinker. As we've discussed previously, based on the lack of clear evidence, I move we sustain the value of 700 University Avenue Southeast at $3,464,500. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second to read. It has uh, been moved by Tinker and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $3,464,500. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havoc is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, item number seven, appeal for 717 University Avenue Southeast, case number 20BH-0121. Are there any questions or discussion from board members related to this property? Board member Tinker. As we discussed the before, due to the lack of clear and convincing evidence, and as long as we're sure to inform the property owner that they can appeal to the county with, with more detailed information as they like, I move we sustain the value of 717 University Avenue Southeast at $2,379,500. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Bland. It has been moved by Tinker and seconded by Bland to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $2,379,500. Uh, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havig is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four eyes, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number eight, appeal for 5153 Zenith Avenue South, case number 20BH-0122. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, some comments I have, it was purchased uh, December 2nd, 2019 for 367,000. Uh, the applicant also submitted an appraisal uh, that was the value came in at three hundred seventy two thousand dollars. Are there any other questions or comments? Um, May I have a motion if there are no other questions or comments? Uh, board member Reed. Yeah, I would move to decrease the value at 5153 Zenith Avenue South to the appraised value of 372,000. 
Thank you. Do I have a second? Tinker second. It has been moved by Reed and seconded by uh, Tinker to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $372,000. I will ask the clerk to call a roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havig is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number nine, uh, appeal for 4143 Colfax Avenue South, case number 20BH-0123. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, so, uh, board member Bland. Um, all of the comps that were provided are duplexes, not condo conversions, so they're not really comps. Yes, I, I noticed that she just took the value of the duplex and divided by two. Uh, that's right. not a fair uh, comparison, being that there's much expense in, involved in turning, turning properties from duplexes into condominiums. Uh, based on that, I would move that we sustain the value of 4143 Colfax Avenue South at 394,000. Thank Second you. Second. Oh, excuse me, there was an overlap there. Second read. Okay, thank you. Um, it has been moved by Bland and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $394,000. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havig is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 10, appeal for 4893 Lake Harriet Parkway East, case number 20BH-0124. Are there any questions or discussion from board members related to this property? Are there any questions? Comments or may I have a motion? Uh, is um, are there any questions or concerns, uh, Board Member Bland? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I think perhaps based on um, the information of the um, size and information we got about the um, easement for the garage, um, for the driveway rather, um, I would um, be willing to entertain a, a reduction in the value Okay. Uh, do you have a number in mind? Oh, not really. Um, <laughs> he was he was wanting to go back to the one million one hundred and fifty. Um, I think that was the assessment in eighteen. We're a couple years beyond that. Um, I would I would move. Um, uh, hmm. One million two hundred thousand. Uh, do I have, uh, do I, do I have a second on that? Second, Reed. It has been moved by Bland and seconded by Reed to re, uh, decrease the 2020 estimated market value to one million two hundred thousand. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. 
Board member Havig is absent. Board member Reeves. Aye. Board member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 11, appeal for 1007 26th Avenue Northeast, case number 20BH-0125. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? This uh, is a property that's sold on 9619 for 270,000. According to the applicant, there were eight offers. Uh, it was uh, on, on the open market and had multiple multiple offers, eight. Um, are there any other comments or questions? Uh, board member Bland. Hi. Um, based on what I'm seeing here and from her information, it strikes me that perhaps the property was priced uh, somewhat below value to start with. And um, while I would entertain a, a reduction in the price, I wouldn't consider it um, to the sale price, even though she paid more than the asking price. Oh. With 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 eight offers, usually it corrects itself, but uh, it's not just like one or two or one or two offers. Uh, any other comments from board members? If not uh, may I have a motion? Uh, yes, I'm I'm move we reduce the value to two hundred and eighty thousand for the property at ten oh seven. 26th Avenue Northeast. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second, Reed. It's been moved by Bland and seconded by Reed to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $280,000. Uh, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havig is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Um, the, uh, uh, from the assessor's office, Jackie or Rebecca, how many people are in the queue for the five o'clock hour? Mr. Chair, we have three applicants that are being led into the queue as we speak right now. They're for items 16, 18, and 19, I believe. And we also have one still there from the previous uh, from that would be item number 15, correct? Correct. So uh, right now we do not have 12, 13 or 14 in the queue. That is correct, Mr. Chair. OK, uh, we have eight appeals scheduled from five to six. We will proceed in case order with those that are present as listed on the agenda. When your case is called, the applicant will be given five minutes to present the appeal. The board will consider and take action after hearing these cases if time allows or at the end of the day after hearing all cases. If your phone is muted, press star six to unmute. Property owners will be notified of our decision by mail after the board has adjourned. Mr. Chair, I'm yes. sorry to interrupt. Um, we do have uh, item 14, the applicant in the queue. Um, I see a notation here. Yep, that would be the first 13. 14, Mr. Chair. Okay. And 13 and 13 as well. OK, so we will start with item number 13 then. 4048 11th Avenue South, case number 20BH-0128. Um, the applicant is Janine Bratz. I will uh, please state your name and I address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. You'll have five minutes. Go ahead, Ms. Bratz. Hi, this is Janine Bratz at 4048 11th Avenue South in Minneapolis. Um, do you have all my my paperwork? Yes, we do. OK, great, great. Um, basically, it outlines um, the value that I've gotten from a realtor, um, so a market analysis, and then outlining repairs that they're recommending to do to get it up to the 250 that she's saying that I could sell the property for. Otherwise, it would be closer to 235. And that's your first sheet, basically, with the market analysis. 
Okay. Um, and all the other sheets are basically the costs of all the repairs. So um, I also have had uh, other companies come through for just what they'd buy the house out outright for, like, um, you know, we buy ugly houses, that sort of thing. And Homestead Road came through um, with a with a, an offer, but not even at two hundred thousand. So um, they basically said that they this isn't a type of property that they would buy. That they actually advised me to sell through a realtor as well if I were going to do that. So, do you have any questions, or did I? <laughs> um, uh, you have a couple more minutes if you want to elaborate on your presentation. Otherwise, we can open it for questions from the board. Okay. Yeah, I um, I I think that's pretty much it. I'm trying to keep it brief. Um, I am getting other estimates in from other contractors just so that I know exactly what this stuff is going to cost to fix. Um, but because of COVID, I'm having a hard time getting everything in time. <laughs> so it's taking a little longer to get um, to get um, estimates on all these repairs. Okay. Um, um, so bas basically, um, realtors are saying 235 up to 250. Um, thank you. Are there any questions from board members? I, I have one. Uh, is this a personal residence or a rental property? It's personal. I, li I live at the residence. I'm the home okay. homeowner and I okay. live here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, any other questions from board members? Well, uh, seeing none, uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, Ms. Bratz, uh, you'll be notified in writing of, of our decision after the adjournment of the board. Oh, thank you so much for your taking the time to listen. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Yep. Bye. Bye. Uh, item number 14, uh, 2528 Pillsbury Avenue. Uh, the applicant is Silver Anime. Uh, please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Good afternoon. My name is Silver Anime. I am the owner at 2528 Pillsbury Avenue South. My wife and I also live um, on the property and I um, appreciate the time to um, give me this opportunity to um, discuss this concern that I have about the valuation. Um, it's not only about um, uh, the proposed value that um, I, uh, I'm doubtful of, also the, the previous year is, in my opinion, a little bit off course. Um, I've uh, submitted a couple of documents, um, also some comps, and uh, some of them are not um, comparable uh, due to their size or, or other details, but um, this is kind of the best um, that we were able to do and actually stay in our neighborhood um, compared to the houses that have been sold. Uh, basically, our house is and has been listed um, as a four bedroom and um, the one of the rooms actually is a, is a den or an office. It's not, um, it doesn't have a closet and it, it doesn't really work as a bedroom. Um, I think what I'd like to really emphasize is the the, um, the property we bought in, in December and it had been on the market um, since uh, September. And uh, I am aware of the fact that there were no other offers than ours that we made late November um, because we simply, we like the house and we want to be close to the, um, to downtown. And, uh, like I said, it was the only offer, and we would have loved to wait a little bit longer uh, to uh, to have better leverage for uh, for bidding for what we actually thought it would be worth. Um, we paid five hundred and twenty thousand for it, and at that point we had already sold our our condo, so we were we we had to move. Um, and if we're really talking about the um, the uh, the values that are given to me and that, that we pay the property taxes on. Um, being the fair market value, the market value that I could actually sell it um, today, um, I am uh, quite um, certain that it would have to start with a four if I wanted to put this house on the market right now and sell. 
So upper 400 is, is what we kind of think that last year's selling price should have been for us. Um, and now the new number that I've been given is 593,500. And um, to be honest, if I, uh, if I were to put about $100,000 into this property, even then I don't see houses like this, the size on this block on this street being near $600,000 range. We're uh, in an old house that was built uh, 1908, I believe, and uh, there are quite a few original things in the house though that will need um, significant repair um, in the future. And, um, and basically where the block also is between 25th and 26th on Tillsbury, it has gotten very busy. Um, parking is, is, is very tricky because of the apartment buildings that we are um, so sort of surrounded with, and um, basically, um, yeah, those those are my points that I wanted to make um, to you. I'd be happy to answer some questions if you have any. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll open it up to the board. Uh, is there any discussion or questions by the board? Uh, looking looking at the uh, pictures and and things, uh, your property is. Uh, very unique and uh, um, um, some is, well just unique for the area to find a house that looks like that unique for Minnesota actually um, board member bland um, <clears throat> excuse me are you renting out the uh, the lower level uh, rental apartment we do use it as as uh, occasional guest um, suite yes um, but uh, currently, of course, uh, traveling has gotten very difficult and uh, nobody is really able to do that as well as um, at other times. Uh, do you, is that for paying guests? Like Airbnb? I'm sorry. Excuse is me? It, is it a, a paying guest, like an Airbnb situation? Yes. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions from board members? Uh, seeing none, uh, thank you for your for your time, Mr. Anime, and uh, we will uh, mail our results to you after adjournment of the meeting. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Um, item number 15, uh, 610 Van Buren Street, case number 20BH-0130. The applicant is Jade Plank. Please state your name and address for the record and the pre then present your appeal to the board. Uh, press star six if you've been muted. My name is Jade Plank. The property address is 610 Van Buren Street, Northeast, Minneapolis. Um, so I had sent over some documentation. I uh, want to make sure the board has that. I have uh, appeal comps with explanations that I'll run through, as well as a desktop appraisal that was completed in March of 2019 with an estimated value of 351000 That also listed 10 comps in that same zip code and area of Northeast Minneapolis that were all sold recently with bedrooms, bathrooms, and square footage. Uh, we have that information, so please go ahead. Great. So I, on the appraisal, you'll state that when the bank did that March of 2019, they estimated the value at 351000 based on information and comps in the area. You'll see that um, there were properties listed on the same block, two blocks over that were average square footage, about the same or larger that sold in that same price range. Um, biggest thing for me is this is a uh, two-unit duplex. I did include comps for all of the duplexes in the area. This property has not had significant updates since I bought it. Um, it does need a new roof. The roof and chimney are well over 15 and years old and in need of repair. Um, when you're looking at the comps that I have included in the list, um, this duplex does not have completely separated utilities, which would hinder the price on an open market sale. Uh, it only has one furnace for both units, um, so they're not separated. It is also located um, pretty much right off Central Avenue in Northeast. 
um, which is very busy, has a bus stop right there. So at times they'll have people walking in and out of the bus stop into your yard. Has three bars located within half a block um, at, and most of the time have parked in front of your house. So it makes that parking very bad. Um, it's not uncommon to have drunk people in my yard, um, as well as an industrial area across the way um, and a patio that plays loud, loud music at the bar, which again would hinder the sale of the, the property. Um, if you look at the comps that I have included in the list, these are all properties that have sold in the same zip code, 55413, within the last six months to a year. Um, so the first one, that was 1011 19th Avenue, sold in November of 2019, so just recently, for 339000 That property actually has more bedrooms um, than my property does, as well as completely separated utilities. And the lot size on that is nearly double my lot size. Same zip code. Uh, the other comp that's listed sold for 386000 um, in November of 2022, uh, that has a total square footage of 332 um, or 3,332 square feet. That would make that um, over 800 square feet larger than mine. Lot size is also larger and that also has one more bedroom and has been fully remodeled and rehabbed with all new kitchens, bathrooms, appliances, uh, electrical and separated utilities. Um, if you take a look at the next comp, uh, so November of 2019 sold for 355. Again, same zip code, about the same approximate um, square footage. But this property has seven bedrooms, so that would be three bedrooms larger uh, than mine, and sold for 355. 721 Adams sold for 407 on April 3rd of this year. Six bedrooms, um, so that would put that with two more bedrooms, three bathrooms, which is another bathroom. And it was uh, over 600 square feet more, um, and the lot size is 2,700 more square feet. Uh, 736 Quincy sold in April of 2020, 353,000. Similar, it's an up and down duplex to mine. However, the property has been recently updated with new paint, siding, water heater, roof, furnace, and appliances with completely separated utilities. Um, so 1811 Quincy uh, sold for 396 in December. Property was completely updated with all new mechanicals, a new two car garage with separated stalls from a rental income standpoint. Um, and it was completely rehabbed all the way down to the studs. Um, and then the lot size is 2,700 square feet more than mine. Um, so just giving you guys comparables to take a look at. I have disputed my property taxes with the assessor uh, um, a few times in the last few years, uh, giving appraisals, including walkthrough appraisals. Um, never went to the local board of appeal. Um, last year, my property tax uh, went up 10% when the Minneapolis area realtors market report for Northeast went up 5.5%. The year before, my property tax went up 11% when that same neighborhood went up 9.4. And the year before that, mine went up 20% when the Northeast area went up 7.1%. I have not done anything significant to my property to raise that. Um, and in addition to that, this would be another 18% increase um, based on from last year to this year. Mm -hmm. I've had the assessors walk through my property. Um, they say that's what it is. I didn't go to the local board of appeal. But then the next year it jumps another 10 to 20 percent. So I'm not sure how that would play Ms. out with the change. Ms. Plank, you've spoken for five minutes. Uh, can you wrap up very quickly? I, I, I think I've covered everything. Thank you for your time. OK, uh, are there any questions from any board members? Uh, uh, ex excuse me, uh, Patrick Todd, did you have a comment on this property or was it for something that we'll wait till after this case is over? Patrick Todd. Uh, apparently, uh, Patrick's not there. Uh, board member Bland. Um, Ms. Plank, what are your rents uh, at that place currently? Uh, eight. My my rent is sixteen hundred right now. So That's what I'm total my total okay. income for both units. Thank you.
And uh, do you pay utilities or do you split that with, uh, or do the tenants split the utilities? I pay the utilities because as I said, the furnace is not separated. Okay, thank you. Uh, what is the exterior of your duplex? What, what Aluminum you? siding. Okay, thank you. Uh, does yep. is, is the uh, first and second floor the same or is this a conversion from an old house? I, I don't know the answer from the conversion from the old house. It is an up and down duplex. So the first or main level is the first unit and then you go up a set of stairs to get into the second unit. And then okay. the basement is a partial basement. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions from board members? Uh, seeing none, uh, thank you for your time today, uh, Ms. Blank, and you'll be notified in writing of our decision. Thank you. Thanks. Um, uh, item number 16, 5228 Upton Avenue South, case number 20BH-0131. The applicant is Pamela Marie. Please state your name, address for the record, and then uh, you'll have five minutes to present your appeal to the board. Go ahead, Ms. Marie. My name is Pamela Marie. Um, my address is 5228 Upton Avenue South. Um, is that all you need? Yes, uh, please go ahead with your appeal. You'll have five minutes. Okay, so um, I sent in 10 pages. Do you have that in front of you? I would like to walk through it with you. Uh, we do have it. Uh, please go ahead. Okay, and so the first um, issue is that uh, you have my square footage too high. Uh, so um, I have uh, supplied a um, blueprint of the house so you can see how much square footage there is finished and um, unfinished. And then I have color coded the um, areas that are finished and unfinished as well. So that's the first two pages. So um, uh, on this, the uh, second floor, I mean the um, second page, the, uh, do you have a, is your page color coded? Uh, it is not. Uh oh. Well, uh, let's see. I have uh, written on there. You see the squares. Where <laughs> the first, first square is actually yellow. It says unheated and cement floors. Uh, and, can um, Can you please speak uh, into your microphone or phone? Uh, it, it's very hard to hear you right now. Any better now? Uh, no, it is not. Um, now it's better. Oh, is this better now? Yes, much better. Please go ahead. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so on the second page, um, uh, there is, uh, and, and I, I do have them written on there, but if you look at the second page at the very top, that's the only area that is finished in the basement. And then when you when you go from that um, top area that says finished basement in it, then you'll see the next area says unfinished basement, um, unheated finished basement. So in there, there are um, cement floor and um, there is electricity in there and um, but none of the rest of the basement is heated. Only that one area that says finished basement is heated. And so the rest has um, cement floors and is unheated. And uh, the furnace that is in there in the house has been in the house since I bought it 30 years ago. So um, that also does need updating, but we're limping along. <laughs> with it as it is. So the square footage that you have is wrong in the first place. And um, I mean, in, in even if I, if even if we added every single inch, um, your square footage does not match reality. You've got way too much square footage in this house. And then um, 
So that's the first two pages outlines how much square footage there is in there. And I wasn't sure how you um, organize what's finished and what isn't finished. So that's why I went into such detail telling you what what was unfinished and what was unheated in that lower level. But there really is only one area that is 269 square feet that is finished and the rest of the house, uh, the rest of the basement is not finished. Okay, uh, you're you're nearing the end of your time. If you want to go on to some oh. of the other items, uh, you, you need to proceed oh. quickly. Goodness, thank you so much. Uh, that is so little time. So I, uh, the other pages I sent you are um, photos of the condition of the house, and um, the uh, lastly are is um, market analysis that I have had done um, with the comp. At, say is stating how much this house would be worth. I was thinking about selling it last year. So that is um, over a year old. Uh, but um, so I just think that your your value is really high, like over a hundred thousand dollars high. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, um, are there any questions uh, from any members of the board uh, regarding this property, uh, board member Bland? Uh, Ms. Murray, how much, um, I, I'm looking at your um, your um, sketch here, how much square footage, finished square footage do you say you have all together? All together, I just need to add it up, but it's, um, uh, on the first page there is 1,080 square feet, and then the, um, Second, um, the basement has 269. So if I add those up, 1080 plus 269, that's 1349. Thank you. Are there any other questions from board members? Uh, see, seeing none, uh, th thank you for your time, Ms. Marie. Uh, you'll be notified in writing of our decision after adjournment of the board. Thank you very much for doing this and in this way. I know I know it's a uh, it's a um, a lot of extra work for you, and I really am grateful to be able to do yeah. this. Thank you. It's it's thank been you. a challenge. Thanks. I bet it has been a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Bye bye. Uh, item number uh, 18, two, or excuse me, item number 17, 3118 Cleveland Street. The applicant, or excuse me, case number 20BH-0132. The applicant is Mary Ellen Ratnan. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Press star six if you've been muted. My name is Mary Ellen Rantanen. My address is 3118 Cleveland Street Northeast. And I am appealing uh, my current property valuation for my 2021 taxes based on um, some comparables that I've seen recently. Um, there's been a couple of homes sold within a few blocks and one actually right on my block in the past, um, well, actually a few months. Uh, the home at 3151 Cleveland Street, which is just right up the street from me, um, was built in 1940, so similar age, similar square feet. Um, theirs is listed at 1521. Mine was listed at 1534 when I purchased it in April of 2018. Um, both three bedrooms, one bath. Um, and that sold in the past month or so uh, for $275,000. Um, the other property that I have been watching was at 3242 Garfield Street, which is just a few blocks west. Um, and that sold in March of 2020 for 284.9. Um, that also had uh, three bedrooms and a bathroom. Um, the property at Garfield also had a deck and um, the thing that the, the two properties that I've just referenced have that mine doesn't have um, is a 
solid, stable two-car garage in the back of the property. I do have a, um, a garage that would be large enough for two cars. It has currently has a, a single plus size door on it, but um, the subfloor, the, the slab is heaving and the structure is not salvageable. I've had somebody look at it and it just needs to be torn down and rebuilt. So um, my thought is that if I were going to compete with these other listings, um, not that I plan to sell it, but if I were, um, I would need to have, you know, some similar um, features in my property. So my garage needs to be torn down. Um, both of these properties, and actually most of the ones that I've seen come on the market recently, have had updated windows, and I have the original windows in my home, um, which I really need to replace. And then uh, this past summer, um, during a season when we had a lot of rainfall, my drain tile failed and I got water in my basement. And so the one finished room in my basement that had carpet and drywall in it got wet. And so I had to take out um, the carpet and have not replaced it. And I've got some mold growing on the wall in the corner where the water came in. So if I, for some reason, were to sell it today, I don't think I can count that space um, as finished square feet. And um, I don't have the bathroom that these other properties are uh, showing when they're listing their homes. Mine is really outdated and in need of um, replacement remodeling. So um, with that, I thought I would appeal and uh, hopefully get that a little closer to what I think would be reality, which is I'm guessing um, somewhere in the 280s that I could possibly ask for my house. I'm hoping that it would be worth more. I'm assuming it would be worth more than what I paid for it two years ago. But um, again, I haven't made any improvements with the exception of replacing a water heater and some corroded plumbing lines in the basement. So um, that's it. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there any discussion or questions by the board uh, for Ms. Ratnan? Uh, seeing none, uh, thank you for your time, Ms. Ratnan. We'll, uh, you'll be notified in writing by uh, our decision. Uh, Great. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Uh, item number 18, 290 Market Street, number 502. Uh, case number 20BH-0134. The applicant is Tim Sheets. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Good afternoon. My name is Tim Sheets. I am the owner occupant of condo 290 Market Street, unit 502, Minneapolis 55405. I appreciate you taking the time to hear this out. Um, I think to start, it's important that I note that I have been a full-time licensed real estate agent um, for the past 12 years. This is an owner-occupied condo, so the data, I believe, is uh, quite a bit simpler than some of the cases you heard prior to me, so I will keep it real simple. There are six main floors in my building, um, floors three through eight. The floors six, seven, and eight have unobstructed views facing north. Floors three, four, and five have parking lot um, affected views. Units 02 and 03 on each floor are exactly the same. They are each 1,295 square feet. The 03 units, which I do not have, I have an 02 units, are considered more desirable because they do not have a shared balcony. I have a divider on my balcony um, that I share with the 01 units. There are a couple of things that make the sales price fluctuate in my building, the main one being the number of parking spots that are in the underground garage most of them have two, mine only has one. They do not have separate PID numbers uh, as many of the condos do down here. So the only way to note that is through the MLS. So the last time a parking stall has traded um, in the building, the sale price was $1,000. So I'm assuming for this that that's roughly the price. Other than that, they are exactly the same. Um, other than which second bedroom is either a wide open loft or actually a closed off bedroom. The closed off bedroom obviously you know, being more desirable for those who have kids. So I just wanna talk about the sales prices of them all. I bought mine at a foreclosure auction three years ago for 
267000 and some change after fees. I have put no significant money into it other than a new washer and dryer and some paint. Um, so let's talk about the sales. The most applicable sale was my immediate neighbor who sold a year ago in March. Exact same unit without the shared deck. It had two garage stalls rather than one, and it had the closed-in bedroom rather than the open bedroom that I have. That sold in multiple offers for $333,000. So if I subtract $20,000 for the parking spot, a nominal amount for the bedroom being closed in, I estimate mine to be comparatively about three ten. When we go up the floors with the better views, Unit 703 had a net sales price of $320,000. That also had two closed-in bedrooms as well as two garage stalls, a little bit older of a sale in November of 2017. Unit 803, the penthouse floor of my building, sold in July 19 for $352,000. That unit also had two closed-in bedrooms as well as two garage stalls. So that being said, I, I think if I were to list mine, best case scenario, we're looking at $310,000. Um, it's almost impossible to purchase an additional parking space um, because it's limited parking and no one wants to give them up. Um, and not sure what other information might be helpful to you, but I certainly am happy to answer any questions that, that may exist. All the finishes in the building are exactly the same. Everybody has the same maple floor, same exposed brick. It's, I mean, almost mirror images of each other. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Sheets. Uh, are there any questions from board members? Uh, board Member Bland. Mr. Sheets, I did not catch what you said the penthouse sold for. Well, the, the, the penthouse floor of the regular style building. So there are two floors above floor eight. Each unit, it, floor nine is its whole own unit. OK, so that's an 1800 square foot penthouse. It's completely irrelevant to my sale. And the unit above that is a 2800 square foot penthouse owned by a Viking that obviously does, you know, night and day different compared to mine. Unit 803, which is on the penthouse floor of the main building sold for a net of 352,000, and that was with the two closed-in bedrooms and the two garage stalls. I do think it is important to note, which I forgot, so if I may go back, that unit 602, which is the unit directly above me that also had one parking stall, briefly came on the market for a listing price of 359,000 a few months ago and canceled the listing because of inactivity. So the, the other item is, is the last time that a, a unit, an O2 or an O3 unit, no matter how many parking stalls, has sold anywhere near that price is when they were built back in 2006. So otherwise, the highest sale price of these that I can see is that 352,000 on the penthouse floor. Other than that, the highest price is $336,900, and that goes all the way back to 2007 for a unit that was on the same penthouse floor. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions from, from the board? Okay, uh, seeing none, uh, thank you for your time today, Mr. Sheets. We'll uh, send, our, send out our decision after adjournment of the board. Appreciate it very much. Yep, thank you. Uh, do we still have someone in the queue? Mr. Chair, we do. We have the applicant for item 19 for 35 Minnehaha Parkway East. Thank you. Item number 19, 35 Minnehaha Parkway East, case number 20BH-0136. The applicant is Leah Kaiser. Please state your name and address for the record, and then you'll have five minutes to present your appeal to the board. Go, go ahead, Ms. Kaiser. Well, my name is Harry Kaiser, and uh, Leah Kaiser is here with me, and we are here to appeal the taxable market value for 2020 or 35 East Minnehaha Parkway. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair, Mr. Chair and LBAE Board. Please go ahead with your appeal. We're uh, going to structure our appeal kind of following the same structure as the recommendation letter that our realtor sent, which is attached to our materials. It's going to relate to the market condition at the time the house was first listed, the condition of the property, and the current uh, comparative market analysis that he was able to do for us. So 
We'll start with the market condition at the time the house was first listed in April of 2019. It was a seller's market and the Tangletown neighborhood had an average of 33 days on market. And our sellers went on in 2019, which is the peak period of the year for full price at $620,000. In May, they reduced to 599 and uh, July, they took another reduction to 575. And in October, after a long period of no reduction, the sellers accepted uh, 515,000 plus $15,000 in closing costs. So when uh, Tangletown usually sells at full price in 33 days, uh, our house was on the market for 145 days. Um, we also would like to refer to the condition of the property and our inspection report is attached, but some highlight that may have affected such a low selling price is the kind of the dated decor. There was a lot of uh, worn carpet that might have turned people off, some dated wallpaper and failing wallpaper due to water intrusion on the walls and some of the ceiling. There was a chimney repair that was recommended for $6,000, but the two big ones are uh, some concrete infrastructure there's a high retaining wall right on the edge of our lot facing the alley that uh, looks to be failing. And that was an estimated fifteen dollars to $30,000 repair. And also we have a long concrete driveway on the south of the house that is failing and draining into the house that had an estimate of fifteen dollars to $30,000 to repair. And those are very visible downsides to the house that probably helped drive the selling price down. Also, it had very poor water pressure when we moved in with all the old galvanized pipe and we have replaced the water service from the street to the house. That, and that was a, a $6,000 bill, but anybody that would have come through the house would have noticed uh, very poor water pressure. So those are the things that the realtor thought uh, resulted in such a long selling time and uh, and such a low selling price. The, the sellers didn't even start as high as our estimated market value. They started at 620, but they ended up accepting uh, 515 with $15,000 in closing costs. So our realtor was kind enough to do a May 2020 CMA, which is also attached. He looked at uh, four or five properties in the area that have similar access to Minnehaha Creek, which is one of the main uh, selling points of our neighborhood. And uh, based on those four or five comps, which you can take a look at, he estimated our current value in May of 2020 at between 525 and 550, which uh, we think is fair. So in, in, in summary, the, the Hennepin County taxable market value that we got from the county for the year 2020 was 668500 and uh, based on our realtor's CMAs that he did of between 525 and 550 that's a difference of anywhere between $118,000 and $143,000, which we feel is pretty significant. So we're, we're here today to ask for our taxable market value for 2020 to be reduced to our selling price, which is 330 or possibly $350,000. Oh, no, sorry, yeah, 550, $550,000 or what we paid for it, which is $530,000. Okay, and, uh, th uh, thank you. Uh, you've um... Reach five minutes, uh, if you can wrap up very quickly here. That is the extent of our presentation, and we just want to thank you for your time. Okay, I'm going to open it up to the board for questions here. Uh, do any of the board members uh, have any discussion or questions for, for the applicant? Um, 
It was very thorough. Uh, uh, seeing no other questions, thank you for your time and you'll be notified in writing of our, our results. Well, thank you very much. Thank you all for your time. Yep, thank you. Have a good evening. You okay, too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, uh, board members uh, will consider an act on the appeals from the five to six time period. Uh, starting with uh, appeal, uh, item number 12. Um, the appeal for 4632 33rd Avenue South, case number 20BH-0127. Are there any questions or discussions from board members relating to this property? And uh, and just for everyone's references, starting with page Are there uh, board member Bland? Um, I'm, I'm reviewing my notes here and um, I see I said um, information requested by assessor um, not not provided, I think is what I wrote. Um, so um, that I believe refers to the two pages 96 and 97 which were letters back and forth between the owner and the assessor. <clears throat> um, and the, the information that the assessor asked for was not provided by the homeowner. OK, um, just reviewing some permit history, it appears that uh, a new single family dwelling was placed uh, over the existing uh, foundation back in 2013 and then uh, uh, significant improvements for uh, solar handling or heat, heat and uh, electric generation of, of almost 35,000 more recently, 2013 and 2016. Are there any other comments? Uh, seeing none, may I have a motion please? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I uh, move that we sustain the value of uh, 588500 for the property at 4632 33rd um, based on very little information provided by the homeowner. Thank you. Tinker, second. Is moved by Bland and seconded by Tinker to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at 588500 I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havoc is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 13, appeal for 4048 11th Avenue South, case number 20BH-0128. Are there any questions or discussion from board members related to this property? It appears that uh, the homeowner has uh, looked at doing significant repairs, but has uh, uh, has not done much yet. Um, are there any other comments? And uh, from what I see, the uh, comparables in the market analysis are similar to the property, uh, no adjustments have been made uh, to each one to help help determine the final value. Seeing no other discussion, may I have a motion please?
Um, sure. Uh, board member Bland. Um, what's missing here is a photo of the property itself. So that leaves me wondering why. Um, um, based on what we've received, it appears that it might be a bit on the high side. Um, I was interested to see that Homestead Road wasn't interested, um, or perhaps she was not interested at their price. Um, <clears throat> I guess. Uh, and and uh, the, the, those companies provide very little in um, valuation since um, their, their, their profit driven is such that it's hard to uh, yeah. achieve any sort of valuation from that. I agree. Um, Uh, I guess I would move that we reduce the value to uh, 290,000 for the property from uh, 309,500 to 290,000 for the property at 4048 11th Avenue South. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second, Reed. Thank you. Uh, it has been moved by Bland and seconded by Reed to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $290,000. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland. Aye. Board member Havig is absent. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 14, appeal for 2528 Pillsbury Avenue, case number 20BH-0129. Um, that property sold uh, in uh, December of uh, 2019 uh, for and, and appraised at $520,000. Uh, is there any other uh, discussion or comment from board members? Uh, board member Bland. Uh, this is an extremely unique property. Um, I sold this property to some buyers of mine in about 19 or pardon me, uh, in 1983 for about $96,000, I believe. It was in um, very poor repair, um, but they absolutely loved it. They had, I lived about two blocks from this property and I loved it when I drove by it. I just thought it was the most interesting property. And then when I got into real estate and I was working with these buyers and this property came on the market, it was in an area that they hadn't been looking but they were so taken with it that they were willing to stretch a little bit to get into it. It required a, a, a lot of uh, work because it had a lot of deferred maintenance. Now, the story behind this is that it was built by James J. Hill for his mistress. And uh, that was, they, they went to the James J. Hill house and saw a lot of things in the Hill house that were replicated in this house in smaller versions. So they put a lot of money into it. They sold it 20 years later, approximately, for $425,000. The, the subsequent owners, the ones that just sold it, made a lot, a lot more uh, improvements and repairs. And um, as you know, it sold just at the end of the year. Um, the um, uh, market appraisal that was provided was kind of amusing. Um, the 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 comps that he chose had were totally irrelevant to this property. However, I realized um, trying to asset, to uh, appraise this property is somewhat like trying to appraise a, appraise a, sh a spaceship that fell in the middle of the block somewhere. Try to appraise that. So um, I just think it's I think it's the most charming place that I've practically ever seen. Uh, they do have um, some rental income property in the lower level that they use from time to time as Airbnb. Um, I realize that doesn't apply now, but we're talking about last year. Um, I would say that I would vote to sustain the value. Um, what I find is uh, most compelling was uh, the length of time on the market uh, and with the ultimate sales price at 520. Uh, as charming as it is, it resisted the market for some time. Um, I would look for something lower. Uh, any other board members want to comment? 
I'll make further comment. Um, it is not a large house. And so at that price, most people are looking for more space. And that's a drawback, um, I understand. But the, but the um, uh, house itself and the finishes are all really, really lovely. Thank you. Uh, will someone uh, put forward a motion, please? I cannot. I need one board member to put forward a motion. All right, this is bland. I will <clears throat> move that we reduce the value from $593,500 to uh, $550,000 for the property at 2528 Pillsbury. Thank you. Second, Reed. Appreciate that. It has been moved by Bland and seconded by Reed to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $550,000. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland. Aye. Board member Havig is absent. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, the next property is item number 15. Appeal for 610 Van Buren Street, case number 20BH-0130. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? This is uh, a duplex and it's current um, 2020 assessed market value is 440,000 up from 373,000 from last year. The owner pro provided a number of comps of which uh, the majority I found credible. Um, are there any other comments from board members? Um, board member Reed. Yes, I would agree that the comps are credible and her description of the immediate neighborhood um, also may affect the value. Thank you. With, without any other comments would be, uh, may I have a motion please? Need a board member to put a, uh, put a motion forward, please. Board member Reed. Yes, I would um, make a motion to decrease the value at 610 Van Buren Street to 375,000. Thank you. From 440,000. Thank you. Thank you. It has been uh, moved by Reed and seconded by Tinker to decrease the estimated market value, 2020 estimated market value to 375,000. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland. Aye. Board member Havoc is absent. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. Four ayes, motion passes. Thank you. Item number 16, appeal for 5228 Upton Avenue South, case number 20BH-0131. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, this is the one where the homeowner disputed the square footage in the lower level. And uh, she has a number of photos of a uh, number of items needing repair on the property. Board Member Bland. Um, I was in this house a number of years ago. Um, she was thinking of selling at that time. Um, it is a cute little house. It's sort of a... Um, uh, probably a, an ideal teardown actually 
because the houses around it are all much more expensive. Um, she's uh, had it fixed up really cute, so it was a very charming little house. Um, I don't know that there is that much of a discrepancy. I was looking at the field card, and um, uh, let's see. Well, they no right for a. I'm in the wrong place here. Oops. Nope. Let me look again. Okay, they are showing a gross um, square foot as 1368, and she I think said something like 1349. So that isn't a big discrepancy. Um, I'm not sure how she was counting square footage um, within the property, so I don't know if that's as big a deal. <clears throat> um, I think because of the she she's getting this um, evaluation because of the area and because so many of the properties around her <clears throat> are much more expensive. So for what's there, um, well, if uh, they, um, I know we have to look at the total picture, but uh, it seems like it is a, a little high for just lot value as a teardown. Uh, yeah, I would agree. Are there any other comments from any other board members? I just don't think I don't think if she put it on the market from what I recall or what I know of the house, I'd be very skeptical that she could sell it for anywhere near 537. I think it would have to be in the fours. <clears throat> I, I agree and. And not the 490s. Um, I may I have a motion from uh, board member, please. Any of the three board members present um, put forward a motion? Sorry, I was putting forward a motion, but I was talking to myself again. OK, thank you. So let me let me restate my very silent motion. Um, I move that we reduce the value of the property at 5228 Upton from $537,000 to $470,000. Tinker second. Thank you. It's been moved by Bland and seconded by Tinker to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $470,000. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland. Aye. Board member Havoc is absent. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Um, item number 17, appeal for 3118 Cleveland Street, Northeast, case number 20BH-0132. Are there any questions or discussion from board members related to this property? Uh, uh, she acquired the property in 2018 for 275000 and uh, from what she stated, uh, she has not made uh, any improvements since then. Are there any other comments or questions from board members? Uh, board member Reed. Well, she, I think I don't think she's made a good case. Um, no comps really, and the, that area is very popular. Very. Um, the property sell pretty fast and I don't think 310 is um, off base, so I'd like to m move to sustain the value at 3118 Cleveland Street for 310,000. Thank you. Do I have a second? Tinker second. It has been moved by Reed and seconded by Tinker to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $310,000. We'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland. Aye. Board member Havoc is absent. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Uh, clar clarification for the uh, um, assessor's office. Case number 20BH-0133. Is that no longer an item for today? 
Chair Anderson, board members, that is correct. Um, we received an email stating that they wish to cancel their appeal. Thank you. Uh, with that, we'll go on to uh, item number 18, appeal for 290 Market Street, number 502, case number 20BH-0134. Are there any questions or discussion from board members related to this property? Uh, board uh, board member Reed, did, uh, did you have a comment on this one or was that from the previous? That was from the previous. Thank you. Uh, board member Bland. Um, I think he made a pretty good case for um, his uh, appeal. Um, other things having sold with uh, two garages, um, <clears throat> a better views. Um, based on that, I would certainly entertain a lesser value than 369000 um, I would agree with that. Uh, I know this uh, lack of a second garage or the lack of the ability to acquire one uh, si significantly affects value on, on some uh, condominium properties. Um, I'm not sure, quite sure I'd go all the way to uh, the applicant's request of 310, but uh, a lower number would be in order in my mind. Are there any comments, other comments from board members or questions? Um, seeing none, may I have a motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we reduce the value uh, from 369,000 to 335,000 for the property at 290 Market Street Number 502. Thank you. Tinker, second. It's been moved by Bland and seconded by Tinker to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $335,000. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havoc is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four eyes, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 19, uh, appeal for 35 Minnehaha Parkway East, case number 20BH-0136. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? I, um, according to the warranty deed, they paid 430,000 on October 7th, 2019. And uh, I think that was their most compelling argument of the information they provided. The inspection report was long, but it did show a significant amount of deferred maintenance. Are there any other uh, comments or questions from the board? Uh, board member Bland. Um, the the uh, comps that were provided were good comps as far as the building goes. Um, what wasn't factored in, I think, is the M factor. So um, I would factor that in to what the what the uh, uh, realtors um, gave um, value. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, if I understood it right, uh, the realtor uh, valued it between five twenty five and five hundred fifty thousand as yes, a fair market that's price. Correct. Yes. <clears throat> Are there any other comments or questions? May I have a motion, please? Uh, board member Reed. Yes, um, I would move to um, decrease the value at 35 Minnehaha Parkway East to 550,000. Do I have a second? Okay, uh, for failure of a second, uh, can you revise that motion or can we have a, a different motion? Well, I, I could revise it to decrease it to 600,000 at 35. 
Minnehaha Parkway East. Second. It has been moved by Reed and seconded by Bland to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $600,000. We'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havoc is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, new business uh, call in hearings before the board from 6 to 7 p.m. We have nine appeals scheduled from 6 to 7 p.m. We'll proceed in case order with the uh, uh, applicants that are in the queue at, and as listed on the agenda. When your case is called, the applicant will be given five minutes to present the appeal. The board will consider and take action after hearing these cases if time allows or at the end of the end of the day after hearing all cases. If your phone is muted, please press uh, star six to unmute and property owners will be notified of our decision by mail after the board has adjourned. Um, I believe uh, the first applicant that is in the queue is for item number 21. 3515 38th Avenue South, case number 20BH-0140. The applicant is Nicholas Morrison. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Go ahead, Mr. Morrison. Hi, this is uh, Nick Morrison of uh, 3515 38th Avenue South. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can, thank you. Okay, so yeah, we, um, you know, we, we purchased this house in uh, July of 2018 for a uh, final sale price of 255,000. The uh, assessed value for 2020 has been uh, set at 302,500. Um, we believe, you know, a, a more reasonable fair market value uh, given, you know, appreciation of the neighborhood uh, is 265 to 270,000. Uh, just for an overview of the house, you know, it's a, a Longfellow Minneapolis bungalow. It's a one and a half story, three bed, one bath. Um, you know, typical layout where, uh, you know, there's sort of you walk in and you're in the living room, dining room, then there's the kitchen uh, off the back. Then sort of in the dining room, there's the stairs going up to the second half story. And then to your left, there's two bedrooms and um, a bathroom. Uh, the basement is unfinished um sort of general condition of the property i think is overall pretty good uh with a few notable exceptions the kitchen uh, contains lead paint and is quite outdated and doesn't have a dishwasher um so you know we're, we're sort of having difficulty renovating it given the sort of substantial cost of doing that the lowest bid we've gotten i think is about fifty thousand dollars um and then uh the second thing which I didn't actually include in the documentation that I had originally sent to you. Uh, I just actually noticed it today is I think the above ground floor square footage, um, at least as it's listed on the Minneapolis City of Lakes property information site is uh, grossly, grossly overstated. So uh, on that site, it says the ground floor square footage is 894 square feet and the above ground, uh, above ground floor footage is 1194 square feet. Um, I think the actual is, you know, depending on how you measure it, uh, is at most 400 square feet. Uh, so the, the second half story is, um, you know, there's only about five feet in the center of the room where you can stand up. So if you go by that measurement, it would be about, um, by my measurement, about 180 square feet. If you go wall to wall and the, the wall at the place where the um, ceiling height meets the uh, wall or the ceiling meets the wall is only three feet high. So, you know, that's great for my toddler, but not so much for me. Um, and if you go by that, then it's about 400 square feet. Um, Sort of on top of that, you know, 302.5 uh, is very high compared to the, the recent sales price. Um, it sold below asking, asking was 259.9, um, and it sold for 255, as you can see on uh, page one of the execut executable offer document. 
and when we uh, re re uh, financed a month ago, um, the assessed value that you can see on page two of that was two hundred sixty-five thousand, um, and that's sort of where you know we were getting that two hundred sixty-five from you know first and foremost. Uh, but then I also pulled down some uh, comparable properties and sort of applied the um, sort of annual average annual growth that has been sort of applied to their tax assessments from the time they most recently sold to uh, current. And, uh, you know, using the, the growth rate of those, we got, I got to uh, 270,000 for the property. And then I also pulled down just the, you know, Case Shiller Home Price Index for Minneapolis market as a whole. And uh, that has increased about 6%. And that would, uh, you know, put it at about 270,000 as well. So that, that index gone. Uh, you'll need to wrap things up. You've uh, met your time limit here. Okay. So, you know, I guess my my final point is that, uh, you know, an appraised value in the 265 to 270,000 range is more reasonable. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, is there any discussion or questions um, by, by the board? Um, I, I will just make uh, one one note. Uh, the the city uh, has your uh, first floor s s square footage at 894 and your upper level at 255 for a total of uh, 11, 1149 uh, square feet. Oh, OK. So oh, uh, OK, they, I guess I was misreading the website. Yeah. Then. OK, uh, so they have Thanks. that Thank correct here, uh, at least on their worksheet here they do, which is okay. what we're Thank you for the click. Um, uh, with that uh, being said about the upper level, is uh, that usable as a bedroom? Uh, um, yeah. Yes, okay. we, I mean, we use it as a, a guest bedroom and uh, a playroom. Okay. So, on, um, you know, we use the two ground floor bedrooms for my wife and I and our son, and then upstairs is, you know, when, when guests come. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any other questions from board members? Uh, seeing none, uh, thank you for your time, Mr. Morrison. Uh, we'll notify uh, you of our decision in writing at the, after the adjournment of the board. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Uh, I believe uh, the next uh, uh, assessor, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the next person in the queue is for item number 27, 624 Madison Street. That's correct. Thank you. So item number 27, 624 Madison Street, case number 20BH-0147. The applicant is E.V. Jones. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. You'll have five minutes. Go ahead, Ms. Jones. Okay, <clears throat> this is Larry Jones, E.V. Jones' husband, um, okay. 624 Madison Street, Northeast. And um, so, um, the main point that I want to make is that uh, this house was built in 1972 and no substantial improvements um, other than the building of the garage in 2012 have been made to this property. Um, both basements are still unfinished um, and need um, substantial work to become usable living space. Um, the, uh, the mechanicals in uh, 626 uh, I'll need updating uh, the windows are original to the house 1972. Um, so <clears throat> in order to bring this this property up to um, current day standards, um, it would be with um, with the windows with um, essentially having to um, gut 626 because we've had a renter in there for 25 years um, who um, is a smoker the uh, the place would have to be um, completely gutted um, and uh, we'd be looking at about hundred and fifty thousand dollars to um, bring this thing up to um, today's standards essentially um, so there's no way that uh, at this point the way the house sits there's no way that we could get um, the 400 and 
$87,000 that it's assessed at. Okay, um, I, I believe it's uh, at $502,000. Or 502, yeah, okay, 487 must have been last year. Uh, do you have any other uh, comments you would like to add? Um, no, just that um, this property is priced um, second or third highest in this neighborhood, and there's no way it would sell for that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, open up to the board members, board member plan. Do you currently live in the property? We do. We live in um, in 624, and it's a double bungalow, um, and uh, we rent 626. How much rent do you get from the other side? Was it eight, 880 okay. per month? Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other questions from the board? Uh, seeing none, uh, thank you for your time today, Mr. Jones. Uh, we'll, we'll notify you of the results uh, after adjournment of the meeting. I notify you in writing. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. Yep, thank you. Uh, do we, uh, Sussers Department, do we have any other call-in for this time slot? Um, we don't have anybody that contacted us um, regarding a confirmation. Um, I did just receive an email from a prop, the property owner um, asking to still be heard by you. Um, so it's up to you, I guess, if you want um, to try to get them the call information somehow or to act on their appeal in writing. It, that would be the properties, um, it's case 142, 144, 145, and 146. Um, I, I didn't fully understand what the options were here. Sure, I can um, repeat that or explain it better. So the instructions for hearings were that, for all hearings were that we needed a confirmation well in advance of the board meetings beginning so that we could provide the call information and um, know what the schedule was for the day. Um, this property owner didn't contact us until after the meeting had started tonight okay. um, and is now asking to be um, heard. So it's up to the board if you wish to just uh, handle their appeal in writing based on what was presented or if I could, you want me to try to contact them. Um, well, I, I believe at this point in time, uh, we'll need to proceed uh, with, with uh, what has been submitted in writing. Okay, I will notify them. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, we will act on the appeals that we did here, uh, starting with item number 20, the appeal for 3344 4th Avenue South, case number 20BH-0138. And uh, just to help out, um, Starts on page 354 of the of the booklet. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Um, board member Bland. Well, what I see in my notes here is it says no rents, no comps. Based on that, I would move that we sustain the value of $322,000 for 3344 4th Avenue South. Taker second. It's been moved by Bland and seconded by Tinker to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $322,000. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havoc is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 21, uh, appeal for 3515 38th Avenue South, case number 20BH-0140. Are there any questions or discussion from board members related to this property? 
Um, I can't tell. Uh, is board board member Bland, is that a current request for the floor? Uh, no, it wasn't, but um, I will comment. Um, his comps were from 2016 to 2018. He said he made some adjustments with regard to that. Um, and so <clears throat> perhaps there would be some reason to do a slight reduction. Um, unless others want to weigh in, I'd propose that we reduce the value from 300 or 302,500 to 290,000 for the property at 3515 38th Avenue South. Tinker or second. It has been moved by Bland and seconded by Tinker to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $290,000. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland. Aye. Board member Havig is absent. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. Four aye, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, item number 22, two, appeal for 5105 Logan Avenue South, case number 20BH-0141. Do we have any questions or discussion from board members related to this property? Uh, board member Bland. Um, <clears throat> all the comps that were provided were too recent. Um, also, I noted that I can't read page 459. Sorry, the font is way too small, so I'm not sure what it says. And uh, uh, the rest of the information is scant as far as uh, comparisons and adjustments. So um, do we have, uh, may I have a motion or any other comments from other board members? Seeing none, may I have a motion, please? Board Member Tinker. I move that we sustain the value for 5105 Logan Avenue South at $684,500. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second, Reed. It has been moved by Tinker and seconded by Reed. This is the 2020 estimated market value at $684,500. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havoc is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 23, appeal for 1501 Emerson Avenue North, case number 20BH-0142. Are there any questions or discussion from board members relating to this property? Uh, the property is a duplex, and other than that, I have no other information about it. And we did not hear from the homeowner. May I have a motion, please? Board member Reed. Yeah, I would move to sustain the value at 1501 Emerson Avenue North at uh, 209,500. Thank you. Second, please. Do we have a second? Tinker, second. Been moved by Reed and seconded by Tinker to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $209,500. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havig is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 24, appeal for 1200 Plymouth Avenue. Are there any, or excuse me, case number 20BH-0144. Are there any questions or discussion from board members related to this property? Uh, board member Tinker. I'm not seeing anything here. Therefore, I move to sustain the value at 1200 Plymouth Avenue at $1,593,000. Thank you. I have a second. 
It has been moved by Tinker and seconded by Bland to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $1,593,000. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havig is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 25, the appeal for 1112 Plymouth Avenue, case number 0BH-0145. Are there any questions or discussion from board members related to this property? Uh, Tinker. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything here again. Um, therefore, I move to sustain the value of 1112 Plymouth Avenue at $157,200. Thank you. Uh, do we have a second? Second, Reed. It has been moved by Tinker and sec seconded by Reed uh, to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $157,200. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havoc is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Shay Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 26, appeal for 2818th Avenue North, case number 20BH-0146. Are there any questions or discussion from board members uh, related to this property? Uh, board Member Tinker. Once again, not seeing anything here, I move we sustain the value at 2800 18th Avenue North at $85,000. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second, Reed. It's been moved by Tinker and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $85,000. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havoc is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. For ayes, the motion passes. Item number 27, appeal for 624 Madison Street, case number 20BH-0147. Are there any questions or discussion from board members related to this property? It's a uh, I believe a 1972 built owner occupied duplex and uh, with considerable wear on the tenant side. Uh, based on discussion from the homeowner, current market value of two, uh, 502,000 uh, homeowners requesting something in the neighborhood of 350. Are there any other questions or comments from, from board members? Seeing none, may I have a motion? Uh, board Member Bland. Um, I move that we reduce the value of the property at 624 Madison Street from 502,000 to uh, Four hundred and fifty thousand. Thank Tinker you. Tinker second. It has been moved by Bland and seconded by Tinker to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I will ask uh, the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland. Aye. Board member Havoc is absent. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 28, appeal for 5229 Knox Avenue South, case number 20BH-0148. Are there any questions or discussion from board members related to this property? Um, uh, one thing of note, it was purchased in uh, July or June of 2019 for $465,000. And 
uh, third party transaction or arm's length transaction. And uh, the home or home buyer notes that there was a seller credit of $4,000. Are there any other comments or questions from board members? Seeing none, may I have a motion, please? Board Member Bland. Uh, I move that we reduce the value of the property at 5229 Knox Avenue from $513,500 to $495,000. Tinker second. It has been moved by Bland and seconded by Tinker to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $495,000. Uh, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havig is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Nay. With three ayes and one nay, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, new business right in Hearings before the board. Um, I believe, let's see. This is going. Uh, Chair Anderson. Yes. We are on item number 29, which is case 20BH 0168. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Item 29, 45 University Avenue Southeast, number 904, uh, case number 20BH-0168. Uh, the page number from the packet is uh, starts at page 660. Is there any discussion or questions by the board? Uh, I did note that there's a warranty deed from 2007 for $1,040,000 and change. And I, there is a, a brief uh, one page uh, item from uh, the property owner. Do any uh, board members have any additional comments? Uh, board member Bland. Well, I do believe that those units aren't selling for quite what they sold for um, before the recession. <clears throat> um, so I don't know to what, I mean, I consider a, a reduction, but not a substantial one. Um, <clears throat> let's see, I would propose a reduction from 1 million, <clears throat> excuse me, 1 million 35,500 to uh, $1 million for the property at 45 University Avenue Southeast, number 904. Take a second. It has been uh, moved by Bland and seconded by Tinker to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $1 million even. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member Havoc is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Nay. With three ayes and one nay, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 30, uh, 6 Mini Haha -Ha Parkway East, case number 20BH-0169. Um, is there any discussion or questions by the board? Excuse the paper rustling. Uh, they purchased the property in uh, on uh, December 11th of 2019 for $556,900. And 
provide uh, some pho photographs of the property. Uh, board member Bland, did you have a comment or is that a previous request? That's a previous request. Um, I believe it to be an arm's length transaction. Uh, Does anyone else have any other? Oh, board member Bland. Um, <clears throat> there's really not a lot of information here to help us make a decision. And I guess based on that, I would move to sustain the value at 598,000 for the property at 6 East Minnehaha Parkway. Thank you. Uh, is there a second? Is there a second on the motion? Tinker second. It has been moved by Bland and seconded by Tinker to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $598,000. Uh, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland. Aye. Board member Evig is absent. Board member Reed. Nay. Board member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With three ayes and one nay, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 31, 1109 East 22nd Street, case number 20BH-0170. Um, this property is currently assessed at $191,000. And um, we do have a one page or a half page letter explaining why um, we should reduce it. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Board member Tinker. I don't see any evidence here suggesting that the assessor's value is wrong. Therefore, I move to sustain the value at 1109 22nd Street East at $191,000. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second, Reed. It's been moved by Tinker and seconded by Reed to sustain the uh, 2020 estimated market value at $191,000. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Oh. Sorry about that, my camera was being finicky. Board member Bland. Aye. Board member Havoc is absent. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. Four ayes and the motion passes. Thank you, Clerk Benjamin. Item number 32. 1812 Lincoln Avenue, uh, num uh, number R4, uh, case number 20BH-0171. Um, it's currently 2020 assessed value of $781,000. Um, homeowner uh, purchased it in 2020 for $503,000, or $503,500. It previously sold in 2006 for a million uh, fifty thousand. Um, board member Bland. Uh, this property is a carriage house. It is um, a, a really a lovely property. Um, it was on the market for quite a quite a while, and it's a perfect example of um, a seller pricing it too high to begin with, and which makes it hard when it already sold for a million to say they did put it on for eight ninety nine. I think to begin with, they had some price reductions. They were finally down to seven twenty five, and then all of a sudden made a 
reduction to 500,000, which to me is a desperation reduction. When that happened, it sold almost immediately. So based on that, um, I would say that the 500 is not realistic for a value. I would certainly um, consider something quite a bit higher, um, more in the 700 plus range where it is evaluated at currently. Thank you for the clarification on that. Uh, are there any comments or questions? Um, seeing none. Oh, uh, uh, from the assessor's office, um, Brian Kaiser. Yeah, Chair uh, Neil Anderson and Council or uh, Member uh, Bland. Just to give you a little more information, that this property is has been filed on in uh, Minnesota Tax Court, and it looks like the property owner did not provide any other information to the local board. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, uh, may I have a motion, please? Yes, Mr. Chair. I I um move that we sustain the value of $781,000 for the property at 1812 Lincoln Avenue, number R4. Tinker second. It has been moved by Bland and seconded by Tinker to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $781,000. Uh, I will ask the clerk to call the motion. Board member Bland. Aye. Board member Havick is absent. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. Four ayes, the motion passes. So uh, lastly, we'll uh, um, decide on the continued cases from the morning session. Uh, item 33 is 4640 Ewing Avenue South, case number 20BH-0064. Uh, if you need help locating it, it's from the morning's packet and starting with page number 231. Um, the city's 2020 city assessed market value is 456,500 and uh, it closed April 27th, 2020 for $415,225. Are there any other questions or comments from board members? Could you give me that put, uh, page number again, please? 231 from the morning's packet. Unless we carried it over from yesterday and then it would, have been, would be in yesterday's packet, page 231. It's from yesterday. Oh, okay, sorry. Right, which means I have to go to the garbage. Excuse me. Uh, board member Bland, you might want to mute your microphone. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, are there any co other comments? from board members. Seeing none and hearing none, uh, may I have a motion? I got it. Just Tim, give me a minute to look at it, would you please? Okay. just have a uh, um, Alta settlement statement uh, showing the sale price of $415,225 as the sales sales price. Uh, Chairman um, Anderson, based on that, I um, make a motion that we um, Sustain the value at $456,500 for the property at 4640 Ewing. Thank you. Uh, do I have a second? Second, Reed. It has been moved by Bland and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 estimated market value 
at four hundred fifty six thousand five hundred dollars. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland. Aye. Board member Havoc is absent. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker. Aye. Trey Anderson. Aye. With four eyes, the motion passes. Thank you. Item 34, 2600 Second Street Northeast, case number 20BH-0091. Uh, this is the commercial property uh, uh, owned by Shock Inc. Uh, the um, applicant made an extensive argument, uh, uh, but I feel unqualified to comment on it. Um, Board member Tinker, would you care to expound on it at all? Yeah, I looked at the information sent over uh, this this marketing brochure. Or not marketing this valuation consulting, whatever it is. Um, can I confirm with the assessor's office? This is basically 100% office, correct? Uh, my understanding was it was office and uh, some sort of uh, industrial or. Um, it looks like just a small production area, uh, print area based on the sketch. Um, again, basing this on the building sketch that the assessor sent. Um, the comparables sent over several of them were old. I think they went back as far as 2016. Uh, I think sale number one only had 50% office finish. Um, sale number two, I think, was a church that involved trading properties. And I think sale number three had fairly minimal um, office finish as well. Uh, based on what I saw, I would move to sustain the value of 2600 Second Street Northeast at $3,103,000. Thank you. Uh, do I have a second on that? Second, Reed. That has been moved by Tinker and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $3,103,000. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland. Aye. Board Member, Board member Havig is absent. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. Four ayes, the motion passes. Uh, lastly, item number 35, 1920 Franklin Avenue Southeast, case number 20BH-0104. Uh, this is uh, the uh, fourplex owned by the Mercell Rental Properties, LLC. Uh, it's a fourplex uh, lacking any off street parking or garage space. Uh, uh, 2020 uh, SES market value is 644,500. And other than that, uh, are there any other questions or comments from board members? Uh, the uh, property owner did send over a packet that was added uh, uh, late. Uh, uh, very basic uh, summary uh, doesn't provide a whole lot of detail as to comps or comparisons or adjustments. Any other questions or comments from board members? Seeing none, may I have a motion, please? I hear the sound of crickets. Board Member Bland. I'm not making any cricket noises, but I'm going to tell you that I'd like to sustain the value of $644,500 for the property at 1920 Franklin Avenue Southeast. 
Thank you very second much. Reed. It has been moved by Bland and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $644,500. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland. Aye. Board member Havoc is absent. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker. Aye. Chair Anderson. Aye. With four ayes, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, with that, we have completed all items on the agenda for this meeting. I will ask members and staff if there are other any other matters to come before this meeting. Chair Anderson, um, from the assessor's office, no, there's nothing else to come for you tonight. Tomorrow you have a fairly full agenda with 57 cases um, remaining, and then we will just have a presentation of an addendum to the agenda um, with the regards to some outstanding cases that you'll just have to act on um, as a group. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you. you. If not, and without any ob objection, I will declare this meeting recessed until May 21st, 2020 at 9 a.m. Thank you, everyone.